open schooling is for students who, for one or other reason, uh, cannot complete their education in the conventional system. So the advantage for them to become part of open schooling is that they can complete their education. Um, but the open schooling institutions can also identify the specific needs of the students, why they were dropping out, and try to tailor uh, the curriculum uh, according to that. What are some of the successive successes that you've seen with the program, particularly in Canada, that perhaps uh, Belizeans can look at and say, this is something that we can achieve as well? I think the biggest advantage within uh, the developed world, like Canada, uh, or say New Zealand or Australia is the fact that students can, while they are enrolled in the conventional school, they are also enrolled within an open school. Let me give you an example of what I mean. If I, for instance, um, live in Canada, I'm allowed to do uh, four of my six subjects in the conventional school and two of those six I can do through the open school and that allows such a student an opportunity uh, to find an employment uh, to help pay for uh, the cost of, of education. So it allows that flexibility and it is a policy within the country uh, that I'm encouraging amongst developing countries that ministers of education should look at how they can blend conventional and open uh, and innovative schooling so that it gives students that flexibility. When, when the whole idea of open schooling spreads and we, we, we embrace it more in Belize, that is what we are hoping to happen. That we will have students who might say, okay, I want to accelerate. I want to take this course because I want to move faster through my program and they are able to. And if the material is available to them, then they are able to do that. At this moment, our focus right now is trying to reach those students who otherwise might not have been able to do schooling. But I think it's a wild field. It's a wide field out there for those um, who may be able to access it even though they're in school because they want to advance and those who had some struggles at the beginning and then have to try to catch up back as well. Would you say there is a demand for this here in Belize? Well, if you look at the out-of-school population, there is definitely a demand for it. We have quite a number of high schools in Belize that offer what we call adult and continuing ed programs and these programs cater to those persons who might not have completed high school who want to further their education as well. A lot of people think perhaps it's something costly that I'm not able to afford, especially in, in, in Belize. Uh, how affordable is it? Open schooling is actually uh, cheaper, uh, more affordable than conventional schooling. We did various studies in various countries, but the Commonwealth of Learning did a big study and we focus on two countries, India and Namibia. And in both countries, uh, we found that in India, it costs, the open school costs one-tenth of what it costs in the conventional school. In Namibia, uh, it cost, um, um, I think it was one third of what it costs in the conventional school. So it's more affordable. Um, what is expensive is when you start an open, open school, that investment cost. But it's like any other business. I'm sure that once the materials are made available, it will become much more affordable to them. Imagine a student who lives all the way in Corozal that wants to access schooling that is not available to him. The person goes online. Rather than having to take a bus, find somebody to care for your child, it's easy to just sit at home once your child is asleep to go and do some work. So it will be much more affordable when you look at the whole picture.